the, the most important question to ask when you see uh, you, somebody with presenting with a hip problem is actually what age she has. And um, and you can see that if if you are, if you ask that question, you can exclude a lot of conditions. And see um, the x axis shows the age, and you can see between the age of 10 and 19, you only have a, a limited amount of conditions. This is a, an MRI scan of a, of a, an adolescent. You can see between the epiphysis and the, and the, the um, uh, femoral neck, but you also you can see the the growth here of the of the rim, and uh, you can understand that. In those patients who have, for instance, camera abnormalities, that, that it can stop diffusion of the rim, and we can get like what we call rim fractures or an osteoblari. Here you can see very nicely the growth plate of the great trochanter. And, um, and this is an example where you can see the growth plate uh, between the uh, os ilium and uh, os ischium. As I said, the condition that you don't want to miss is a slipped capsule femoral epiphysis. What happens is that your the patients have a fracture through the uh, growth plate, and the, the epiphysis slips medially and posteriorly. <coughs> the age group between 10 and 17, it's uh, often associated with hormone, hormonal abnormalities, radiation treatment, uh, with uh, chemo, steroids, a family history of uh, slipped capsule femoral epiphysis. It often occurs bilaterally, so if you had it on the on the other hip, then you might have to think about it. So it's more frequent in boys than in, than in girls. And um, often in, in um, uh, boys that are a bit overweighted uh, for their height. So they start to complain about limping. Um, limping can be intermittent. <coughs> Sometimes there is a trauma. <coughs> they have hip end. They can also have knee pain. Often when they sit, you see that they actually the leg turns out. When they have have it on boats, on both uh, sides, and they can walk uh, with a waddle. So, I think uh, I'm a big fan of X-rays as the first call uh, for any hip conditions. But it's a commonly misdiagnosed, and it usually takes about three months, uh, on average, before the correct diagnosis is made. And uh, at that stage, you can already have lost your opportunity because you want to be able to fix uh, the epiphysis in an anatomical position. And he, here we see uh, uh, a slip capital femoral epiphysis fixed with a one cantilated screw. And if you look at the AP view, yeah, everything looks quite nicely in place. But if you look at the, uh, the frog leg view, you can see that the epiphysis on, on, on the right side has slipped a little bit. The complication of the surgery can be colonized when your screw goes through the articular cartilage. If you try to reduce uh, a slipped epiphysis too forcefully, you can uh, create an avascular necrosis. And, and if you are not able to fix the epiphysis anatomically, it might cause some problems in later life because of the abnormal shape. And then it can lead to labial tears or uh, articular cartilage damage. <coughs> the next condition is hip dysplasia. It's a bit less frequent than, uh, than impingement, but much more frequent than slipped capital femoral epiphysis. And it basically means that the, 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 the femoral head is, is not covered completely. And uh, those patients uh, who present with dysplasia during adolescence are usually those with a, a bit of a milder type of dys dysplasia. Uh, and, and, um, and often you see that when they start to engage in sports that they start to complain about pain, limping. Uh, some of them uh, had a breech position uh, at birth and, and often we see that there is a family history of, uh, of uh, a stubborn dysplasia. You can see uh, the um, the angle measured is, is what we call it the centrage angle, and um, the, the smaller that angle, the less coverage of the femoral head. Treatment is uh, preferably non-surgically with, uh, I would say, modification of activities, um, physical therapy, and, and in some occasions we do a hip injection with some generally not, not with steroids. Surgical treatment, hip arthroscopies are um, useful in those patients with mild dysplasia and label, and label tears. But, but in those patients um, who have uh, a bit more, uh, well, a lower, a lower center channel, sometimes a osteotomy is necessary, and uh, sometimes uh, a combination of, of, of a an arthroscopy and, and uh, an osteotomy. That brings us back to the most common condition, femoral stubborn impingement. One of the most common symptoms is that there is uh, significant pain uh, after sports activities. 
we start with our clinical examination, I always test uh, everybody with, we look at strength of the, we do isometric strength testing of the adductors, abductors, we do um, uh, electronic measurement of the range of motion. Um, our imaging, uh, first thing that we do is, is pelvic x-rays. Uh, in adolescents, um, to reduce the amount of radiation, we, we do frog leg views. We like to do uh, MRI arthrograms, uh, preferably with a bit of local anesthetic because it, it helps. Uh, in, in, in that age group, very often you see that uh, patients have large wave sign. That means that they have an area of unstable cartilage, and very often you don't see the label, label tear. But, but if you inject a local anesthetic at the same time and it takes away the pain, then at least you know that it is coming from the hip joint. Now, in adolescents, how do they do with surgery? There are, is one review study uh, published uh, uh, this year, basically. And uh, they look at uh, the, the satisfactory rate following uh, impeachment surgery in the adolescents is between 84 and 100 uh, percent with the arthroscopic technique and about 79 percent with the open technique. Last but not least, um, I want to just touch on the apophysial injuries of the pelvis. It can be confusing because the, um, <coughs> the pelvis has about eight ossification centers. They, they occur around uh, adolescence. Uh, age of 17 and, and some of them take about until the age of 25 to, 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 uh, to close. You see the, uh, the bony fragment here and um, this is just a, an apophysial injury of the, of the adductor longus. Avulsion fractures of the, of the pelvis have a, a peak age around 13.4 uh, years old. It, it's more in, in males than in, than in females and, and um, soccer and gymnastics are the main sports. You can see that the most common one is the uh, ischial tuberosa avulsion, which is basically the hamstring that, that avuls, followed by the anterior inferior iliac spine. Here you can see that there is a, again an avulsion of the um, inferior uh, iliac spine, as the blue arrows show. And you can see here very nicely, uh, this is your uh, rectus femoris tendon. This is the straight head of the rectus femoris. This is a reflected head that attaches above the acetabulum. This is an example of um, initial tuberosity avulsion, as you can see here. 